and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono white aggro in historic. So what we're going to be doing here, so I had a donation, you can see, all right, so these are the two Ds here mean donation decks, usually viewers submitted decks, but you can also donate for me to make decks. And so this is one that I put together, had a donation to make a mono white aggro deck in historic. And so this is what, this is what we got here. So to, to kind of explain some of the card choices, um, of course, we want lots of one drops with mono white. You can see this deck kind of looks like mono white from uh, right before rotation, basically. And so we got lots of one drops, except for Throne of Eldraine did add some some new better one drops, I think. Uh, I just love Stone Coil Serpent. You saw like when, whenever we played on Tuesday, the mono white aggro in uh, in in standard Stone Coil Serpent was definitely an all star for a one drop because this is a one drop that you don't. Like, if you have other one drops in your hand, you can make this a lot better two mana card, three mana card, four mana card, and so on. So it's it's not just limited. Like, yes, a one mana, one one reach, trample, protect from multicolor. That's perfectly fine, especially when you have cards like Venerate, Luxodon, Unbreakable Formation, Venelish Marshal that make it bigger. But it also just scales well for the games that aren't going according to plan, because you're not going to just curve out perfectly every game. That's not how magic works. So the games that, that don't go according to plan and you just kind of have more lands than you have threats, you can make a Serpent a bigger creature. Also, Giant Killer looked really good. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of Questing Beasts in Historic. You can chop them down. You can use this, of course, as a tapper. Um, so I'm definitely excited about Giant Killer. And then I'm not sure about Fairy Guide Mother. This, is, this was definitely a slot that I'm not sure about. One thing that I wanted to try to do is I wanted to try to get... Uh, I wanted to try to get a couple creatures that were better against Goblin Chain Whirler. But Guide Mother doesn't really um, fit that. But that Gift to the Fey Sorcery, again, games don't always go as according to plan. There's a lot of like creature matches that uh, they have their creatures on the ground. You have your creatures on the ground. You're kind of staring at each other. And the Gift of the Fey Sorcery can, uh, can help break board stalls. And plus, it's just a flying threat also. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of good white one-drops in Historic, though. Um, Snubhorn Sentry... Uh, was was one that definitely thought about snub snub horn yeah snub horn century could have been in there um the new the new set with historic anthologies added in um a good one drop against other creature decks soul warden that's that's the name of the card <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. You're not forced to play play sets. Yeah, we could. I could just split this up this this slot into four different one drops. That's true. Soul Warden is pretty good against red decks and everything, and just good against other creature decks, gaining you the, like that life. But it doesn't really do combat very well. You know, like where the Guide Mother is very good at combat, um, with being a flyer and the Gift of the Fey part. I I think I just kind of I just kind of settled on Guide Mother. But there's there's some other options there. Sky Marcher Aspirin, of course, can be a flying creature as well. Bodyguard is a knight, so that's has the history of Benalia synergy there. And plus, this is a good one drop later on to protect like Benalish Marshall. Um, besides that, you know, we got we got our Venerate Luxodons, pump our creatures, and I've been just really impressed with Unbreakable Formation. And I think this is just a card that's good enough to play like three of in the main deck. I'm basically playing this over playing main deck Gideon or uh, Conclave Tribunals. Basically just playing un Unbreakable Formations. I think this is a, a way to win creature matchups. And it's very good against sweepers. Because one thing that Mono White Aggro, like, it's going to be, we're going to be okay in creature matchups. I don't know if we're going to be, you know, spectacular, but we should be okay. Like, we can get a lot of power out there quickly, especially Venerate Luxodon's awesome. Same, same with Benelish Marshall and other creature matchups. Usually where Mono White Aggro struggles is against Esper Control because they just have a lot of sweepers. You know, they have a lot of removal, a lot of sweepers, and obviously, like, that's tough for us. And that's why I want three Unbreakable Formations in the main to try to counteract their sweepers um, with that. Of course, we have a Danto Vanguard also. But you could, you may be able to see this. That's what my sideboard is really... Like, this is what my sideboard is basically for. Like, we're going to be okay in creature matchups we have baffling ends to add in also but it's it's esper that i'm i'm worried about us beating esper honestly and so i have um 
11 cards that we're bringing in here against Esper. Against Esper, I'm bringing in Tithe Taker, Gideon, Ajani, and an extra Plains with us having the Gideons and the Ajani's in here. So we're going up, we're going to go up to a 22 land deck against Esper, bring in a and bring in just some some alternate forms of attack where it's not just all creatures. Uh, at least creatures that die to sweepers with Gideon with a Johnny that can bring back. I wanted like another good two drop to go along with the Danto Vanguard for a Johnny to be able to bring back. And so that's that's where the Tithe Takers come in. Um, so we'll just have Tithe Taker and a Danto Vanguard. And of course we can be ticking up a Johnny to, to get to, to threaten the ultimate and everything. I wanted a different form of attack. Hey, what's up, Samantha? Um... As far as sideboarding out, Venerate Luxodon is just kind of the definition of overextending. And so it's Venerate Luxodon goes out kind of the same with Benelish Marshall. A three mana 3-3 three, three isn't that good of a threat. And so I'm basically going to be replacing Benelish Marshall and Venerate Luxodon with Gideon and Ajani. Um, and then we'll have Tight Takers in here. And then we'll probably just cut the Guide Mothers, either Guide Mothers or Giant Killers. Cut one of those two. And so like we can... Or at least trim three of these and then get rid of Marshall and Luxodon. And that's our 12 slots there. All right. Uh, that's that's kind of the game plan. So let's see how it goes. We're, we're also not really great against... Uh, so we have to play ranked, by the way, even though it's donation deck, just because that's where you find best two out of three with Historic. We're not great against um, Nexus of Fates, against the combo deck. You could play Demystify in the sideboard, which is awesome in that matchup. But I just haven't really been playing against that basically at all. I think Questing Beast has really hurt Nexus. And I and I think just Mono Red and Gruul, I think they're kind of too fast for Nexus. And Nesper has a lot of good discard and counter magic and stuff. And so I just don't really see Nexus hardly at all. And so we, uh, we're we not playing it. Or we're not playing Demystify. But I can't really get through a wall of... You know, we have to do attacking. So if my opponent just has a wall of... Fogs. We're in a struggle. So I like our sideboard. This is a good matchup for our sideboard. The thing about discard, it doesn't protect against the top of the deck. Obviously, it would have been better for me to cast the Gift of the Fae also, but I was kind of worried about removal. Maybe I should have just done it on a Danto Vanguard. Because <clears throat> if... If I cast the Gift of the Fey, and they have something like a Moment of Craving or, you know, some kind of removal like that, Disfigure, Moment of Craving, I just didn't want to risk getting that two for one. Good job, Adanto Vanguard. Way to be awesome. And yeah, this matchup, you know, I'm assuming they're going to have... Nicol Bolas, the Ravager. So Giant Killer can take out Nicol Bolas. And if we're worried about Gift of the Fang, 
We'll just kind of cut some of those. Yeah, so I don't have any... Um, that's that's true. Another one drop you could play is... Uh, like, the flipped part is a Danto, the, the first four. Legion's Landing. Legion's Landing. And the re basically the reason why I'm not playing Legion's Landing is because because we have Castle Ardenvale, really. Um, that That's really the reason why, is because we have Castle Ardenvale. Because the, the front part of Legion's Landing is, of course, just a one-mana 1-1 one, one that... It's difficult to to really uh, take advantage of just a you know a singular one mana one one that doesn't do anything else, and I just wanted to ha my one drops to be more impactful than that. If we didn't, if Castle Ardenvale wasn't a card, then yeah, we'd be playing Legion's Landings. But you know maybe that's an oversight. It is really nice being able to flip Legion's Landing and get that extra land too that that is really nice sideboard coming coming in here yeah it's a better castle but Yeah, when you flip Legion's Landing, that's awesome. But it's just does it doesn't always flip. Sometimes you just have like multiple Legion's Landings in your hand where you just have like the one ones and and they don't always flip. The ceiling of Legion's Landing is very high because flip, you know, flipping Legion's Landing into a Danto the first ward is awesome. But the floor is very low at a 1-1 one, one lifelink creature. That's all it's doing for you. And so with, with having Castle Ardenvale, I thought that we could just um, be able to play better overall one-drops. Looks like my opponent has... Flame sweep again. And flame sweep is so good against this group Banalia. Together, return to the fight. I was not expecting that. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That I was expecting. I was expecting something to kill a Johnny. There are a ton of There are a, a ton of Noxious Grasps in this format, which does make playing Mono White a little more difficult.
We're close. I guess the land in my sideboard should be the fourth castle Ardenvale, not another planes. Like while I'm bringing, because I still have the eighteen planes. So yeah, my yeah, we'll change that after this this match. My sideboard land should should be the fourth castle Ardenvale. Hey Matthew. Uh, Azeroth did. All right, well, my opponent's thinking I'm going to just change the decklist command to show that, because I'm going to change that after this game. When adding fancy lands, is there any guidelines you follow for keeping a basic lands in the deck? No, there's no real guideline. It's just... We have to start with... We have to have a, a basic planes in our hand. We, you can't really just have a hand of... Of just castles. Because then you can't play, like, your one drops. Like, you gotta be able to play your one drop. So, you just... So we're going with 18 lands. I, th I mean, you could probably go 17. You could probably go 17 and have the f full four in the main deck. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little more comfortable with 18. And that's basically just from playing a lot of magic. See, like if this hand was castle, castle, that'd be kind of a disaster. Uh, disaster is a little strong. So yeah, there's there's 21 lands. There's the 18 planes and there's the three castles. Okay, cool, Matthew. Yeah, uh, Storm Storm said that he was playing the deck yesterday, the mono black crisis deck yesterday with those changes and really liked it. So it's good to save Dauntless Bodyguard, of course, so we can actually target something. So we'll lead with the Aspirant. Giant Killer could kill a a big Tempest Gin. Did not attack. I would rather Adanto Vanguard get countered than Dauntless Bodyguard. I like Bodyguard protecting the Serpent more than Adanto Vanguard. Oh, two cards in hand. Could have attacked then. Correct, Azraeloth. The on for me, if somebody uses a Twitch Prime sub or if somebody does the regular five dollars a month sub, it's the same. 
I get the same payout. I could have spell pierce. I hope not. Yay. Somebody just cast Sky Tether on your Adanto Vanguard. Aw. Alright, so this is a very good matchup for Tithe Taker. With the counter magic. I think I'm just going to have Tithe Taker replace Adanto Vanguard. This is not a very good Adanto Vanguard matchup, especially if they're playing Merfolk Trickster. Which maybe they're not, but I assume they are. Then what do I want to... So, like, that's a pretty easy switch. But then what do I want to take out for Baffling End? Let's take out one Unbreakable Formation. Maybe a second. Maybe a third. I don't know, Giant Killer is pretty great. Maybe I'd, I'm going to take out a land with trimming the curve. Let's do that. We're going to go down to 20 lands. We're on the draw, so we get that extra card also. And we're trimming the curve. Cool. Hey, Shock. Oh, awesome, Shaper. Glad you're enjoying the Orzhov value list from yesterday. Awesome. So I would love to resolve Tithe Taker. It's a lot easier to resolve it on the play. Um, I'm just going to go for it. Boo. Raisin Borrower is good. Let's 
Stop drawing lands. Anomaly. Anomaly. Thanks, Anomaly. New PC, no more lag. That's right. Thanks for that resub. Oh, that's the second sub today. It's possible they have a flash creature that kills giant killer, like Merfolk Trickster. I hope we have the exact same hand on the draw for game, or on the play for game three. So if you can have, if we have Tithe Taker on the uh, turn two on the play, we're probably winning. It's Tithe Taker is so important. I guess this game's not over. Stone Cold Serpent's been so good. Hey, Azrael, getting the sub. On summon nice there with the just one mana cost, so they still get to activate the Spectral Sailor. Go, giant killer, go! We are attacking for 13 damage here. Question is, do I want to attack for 13? Or do I want to have the giant killer back at defense? Two now. Kiora plus the Great Henge equals drawing two cards per creature, per big creature. Kiora is really underutilized, isn't Kiora? We need to we need to make some more Kiora decks. Talk about a card that's not used enough. So that just gives you reason to play Questing Beast and Shifting Ceratops, and just already great cards. 
Yeah, this is Bright Eyes is the name of the band. First day of my life. Very good song. A good line there. Rather be working for a paycheck than waiting to win the lottery. Um, Watery Grave probably means Esper. It could be Grixis, but it probably means Esper. I want to have two creatures in play before I play Bodyguard, so that if I just played, if I just had the one creature in play, if I just like lead, if I play Bodyguard first and have the one creature, and they just Doom Blade my one creature, then I don't get any Bodyguard help. training. Bell haunt's really good. Bell haunt's really good. Oh, come on. Legion's End. There are so many mysteries to uncover. Keep an open mind.
prowess. Boo. I guess they're kind of stuck on lands. I, I kind of wish I was going to draw a land here so I could tap this thing and still be able to activate castle. Honestly. You're liking the Karn? Awesome. I want that land last turn. I guess I should have tapped before attackers. I don't understand your question. Do I have a repo? I don't I don't understand the question. Will make an excellent minion. A repository, a place where you keep it all. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. There's this, the Stream Decker page. I I feel like it's easier, like, you can use that. I think it's easier to just use the YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel, you know, just click on the video tab. And it has all the videos. It's I think it's easier to kind of scroll through and, and see the different decks that way. So you can see why I thought that that was going to be a tough matchup. If they're going to be playing a bunch of bell hunts, then Guide Mother is probably better than Giant Killer. I guess we could just play two of each and then we play one extra one. 
play an extra guide mother. The Lux the Luxodon got discarded because of Bell Hunt. I I don't really regret not killing an Narset. Yeah, I could have played the Luxodon before that, but playing the it's the thing is playing the Luxodon is I mean, it's just all in and then they play a Wrath, you just lose. I was kind of assuming a Wrath more than a Bell Haunt, and if they if they Wrath, I wanted to have another creature afterwards. That's why Venerate Luxon gets boarded out in this matchup. It's it's really bad against Kaya's Wrath. It's just the definition of overextending. I didn't want to just throw out my entire hand and lose to a Kaya's Wrath. I mean, it's just you see a lot more Kaya's Wrath than you do Bell Hunts. My opponent had Bell Hunt, which meant that playing the Luxon would have been better. That's just not not something you usually see from Esper. If I was on the draw, I would keep this. Not sure about on the play. On the play, if I don't hit that, if I hit the second land, it's awesome. If I don't draw the land, we probably lose. And we have a higher percent chance of not drawing land than drawing land. Okay, cool, Kendis. I'll play it safe in Mulligan, even though that, that hand could have been perfect if we would have drawn two lands off the top. Go, Johnny, go. You show remorse. I'll show this. That's more like it. The real question is whether or not I want to play the Sky Marcher Aspirant. Oh, 
You are capable of more than you assume. No, I don't think Mono Green Aggro is a top tier deck. But I think it, it has some, some good tools. But no, I don't think it's a top tier deck. Gruel Aggro is not too great. In, like the question is, like somebody says, the Gruel Aggro may be too great. It's, it's, it's fine in both standard and historic. It's not too great. I think it's it's a good deck for sure, but it's it's not too good. This is a prime day for justice. struggle. I will lend you my strength. Well, they did not... They did not tap correctly there. You do not fight alone. Prepare for battle! So we get to ultimate the Ajani. So we get three 1-1s one every end step. Yeah, they're punished real hard for not tapping correctly. You can see why this looks like such a tough matchup for us. They're just playing all these sweepers. Um, they have Elder Spell, even for like my sideboard plan of the Planeswalkers. It's just a really tough matchup, which is why it's really like the, the thing that I spent the most time of like thinking, how is Mono White Aggro going to beat Esper? And this is the, I don't know, this is the best sideboard plan that I came up with, but still a very tough matchup. Yeah, so it's it's my end step that I get the three one ones each time. And then we would make a, a one one because of Castle Arnvale on their end step. Okay, you've been really loving to play Gruel Henge, nice. So Historic and Standard are both constructed formats. It's the same as how Best of 1 Standard and Best of 3 Standard have the same rank, even though those are different formats. They play differently. It's the same thing. So just you have just one constructed rank. I guess it was just kind of split, split it up too much if you'd have a Best of 1 rank and a Best of 3 rank and a... In historic rank. The question is, what's the best deck for historic? It's you basically have two things you have to beat. You have to beat aggro, which by that I mean mono red and 
Gruul. And you have to beat Esper. You can't... It's really difficult to do that game one with a deck that can do both of those. So it's... Bit, um, and so you just, you just have to have your... Whatever deck you want, be able to do one of those. Usually just you want to try to beat aggro game one. And then have a ton of sideboard tools for Esper. You know, good 10 plus sideboard cards for Esper. Because there's a bunch of Esper as well. I'm not really expecting Settle the Wreckage. So I'd rather play the Sky Marcher Aspirant than the Guide Mother, but the problem with playing the Aspirant is they could have Legion's End. Yeah, but if I play the Guide Mother, it makes it a less of a chance that they, if they have Legion's End, that they would Legion's End the Aspirant. But this this sets up lethal if they try to Wrath. And that's why Guide Mother's good. Good job, Unbreakable Formation. Good job, Guide Mother. Good job, deck. We're, we are 3 and 0. Oh. Hey, Sir Eccles. We have had some ugly looking hands. So I think it goes Serpent, because then I go, like, one drop, double one drop, Marshall. Is Serpent a better one drop than either of these? Probably not, For if, if it's just one mana. <laughs> yeah. We have been mulliganing quite a bit. I, I did not get a Hawkeye Christmas present yet. Wild Growth Walker. Maybe I just play Giant Killer and save Bodyguard to protect Marshall. But I kind of like saving the giant killer to be able to chop down. Come on, land. No. Maybe they don't have explore creatures. That would be nice. Hmm.
Alright. Land. Yay. We gotta chop down that dinosaur. That was a big un What are you what are you saving? Sky Marcher? Oh, yeah, Giant Killer is very good in Standard. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. So we're getting three for two'd. Oh, right, Stone Coral Serpent Protection doesn't work because of Questing Beast. Ugh, that's fair. I mean, not really, but... Come on. I was thinking about like the wild growth walkers. I was like, wait a minute, it creases blocks. All right, so Vanguard can come out for baffling end, and we're good to go. TG bots not subbed again. Oh, yeah. Send a message. I kind of wish we had a Danta Vanguard just to be able to play here. Get more creatures in play. I I think I'm supposed to just save the Giant Killer and everything, though, so I, I just have a bad turn. I think just thinks that that's just how that's going right there. Get some more creatures out here for the elephant. If I drew a land there, I was going to play giant, you know, I was going to chop down plus giant killer. Uh, 
Oh, what? Oh, that's a bad attack. With the bodyguard. Ugh, that thing dies to the 1-1. One, one. Just kind of hit the, the attack all there. My heart beats in unison with the wild. Pretty surprised they minus. So, that does let like this thing just kill the Vivian. Oh man, I I am not playing well. But anyway, I played the unbreakable formation there to get to not waste like that big pump with that creature to be able to get that damage in. But obviously I could have put the counter on that giant killer too. I really want to draw land so I can unbreakable formation and tap with giant killer. Ouch. Ouch. That's a turn right there. Not gonna let him block with the Jade Light. Oh, that wild growth walker was rough. We're up to one, or down to one. But... So get rid of one crisis, tap the other crisis, attack. Unbreakable formation still being great. All right, can we win game three on the draw? Who knows? Wild Growth Walker is awesome. Questing Beast, Hydro Crisis, they have some. Very powerful cards. Deco Knight, 34 awesome months keeping that Twitch Prime sub going. Thanks, Deco, for continuing the sub there. I really appreciate that. I guess. We're going to have to just draw all spells, no lands. All spells. Bathlian would be nice if they have Wild Growth Walker. That's a land. Don't want to land. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, turn three, the Great Henge. I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? I can't. I could even play my Giant Killer yet. I think it's possible they have no more creatures in hand and they don't draw another creature. Nope. Okay, three and one. That was just a perfect hand. My hand was not good. Their hand was perfect. <clears throat> oh yeah, Land of is definitely the best one drop in Arena. If if it's not Gilded Goose. I guess you could make an argument for Gilded Goose. But yeah, Land of Warlock being able to be used over and over. Let's try it. Again, on the play, I don't think I would. We're going to try it on the draw here. The problem with playing two Dauntless Bodyguards is that have one Bodyguard protect the other, but then if I have to sack this Bodyguard to protect the Sky Marcher and sacking this Bodyguard to protect the Bodyguard, it doesn't make any sense. So how much do we want to put out to the to the battlefield against a potential sweeper? All of it. Obviously, my play is terrible against Kai's Wrath. We're going to force them to have it. I'll protect you.
Well, they had they had Kai's Wrath. I think they're supposed to bounce the aspirant to take the counter off of it. But yeah, I guess I guess that was their plan. I guess they don't have any removal for the Vanguard, and so that was their plan with the Thought Razor. I was saying that before I considered Thought Razor. Just can't ever kill him. They're still at 16. I've attacked for like 40 damage this game, and they're still at 16. Of course, I'm counting, you know, like the Kai's Wrath oh, killing all those attackers. Yeah, there's definitely, yeah, there's definitely an argument. Could you could switch it up and have the deck. Just have to kill Narset. Have the deck built to beat control game one. Just have your, your anti-control game. Your pre-boarded game. And then you sideboard into the, the anti-aggro. It's definitely true, because yeah, control is the most popular. It's more popular. Well, so that's the thing. I don't know if it's, if it's more popular altogether than aggro, but it's getting to it now. Like, a week ago, I would have said no, but yeah, like, the last couple of days, Esper is certainly the number one deck that we've played against. That's pretty good. Surveilling with Thought Erasure be before Narset minusing. Looked good. Bounce the Othakaya. What are you doing? Do you want to play your deck? Bounce the Othakaya. Thank you. Trust me, I have a plan. <clears throat> MTG bots. Thank you so much there, MTG bot. All right, let's see. So Marshall, Venerate, Luxodon, and some giant killers out. Here we go. <laughs> uh, thanks, MTG bot. Yep, goes to our sub goal there. Yeah, this is historic right now. 
Yep. Yeah, that game was over when they had the wrath. Agree, agree. But yeah, I could definitely see that that being the the case for historic build. You know, like your anti Esper control deck. Have that be your main deck, and then sideboard in all of your removal spells and stuff like that. Come on. Just two lands. And now we'll leave up Unbreakable Formation, of course. My best draw would be a Johnny, Adversary of Tyrants. That'd be my best draw. I am not going to sit this one out. This fairy card's pretty good. I've got it. Pretty good. It's just, you know, gain five life, draw a card. And I guess I don't get to keep up formation now. Sorry, Let's do I'm this late. again. What's up, Medivari? Brand new Twitch Prom sub. Thank you so much there, Medivari. Welcome to the channel. Bunch of, whole bunch of lands isn't going to win this. Mulligan and then draw seven lands. It's not going to win this. My prowess is unmatched by my team. Hone your prowess. Only lead you astray. I have just the trick for this. Those are a couple of really good at solid hands from our opponents the last three games and pretty bad hands from us. 
But we still had a three and two overall record. So winning record there. But yeah, Esper is really tough for us to beat. It is. Um, that's, you know, that's that's definitely a tough matchup. That's what, you know, we have our cyborg cards that, you know, hopefully, like, that's what we're trying to do with a Gideon and a Johnny. And we saw that work in one of the matches. You know, like, we lost Esper game one and then got him games two and three. Uh, we saw that work, but um, sometimes you draw too many lands. This deck doesn't um, doesn't have, like, the card draw. Which is, which is how it, it it's difficult to win really long games. Like you really need Castle Ardenvale and a Johnny Adversary Tyrants and stuff like that. You like you need your Gideon. You have to win the games you know pretty quickly, or just have an alternate um, form of attack that's not just creatures. The thing about Mono White is there's just not really good card draw in Mono White. <clears throat> no, yeah, I think Unbreakable Formation is a better card than Brought Back. I don't, but that I mean that could be an option. But Brought Back is is basically only good against sweepers, and still like you're just getting usually probably just getting like two mana worth of cards. Yeah, so you'd be playing Brought Back instead of Tithe Taker. Basically, I I think I'd rather just have Tithe Taker. <clears throat> All right, anyway, um, there we go. That's Mono White Aggro for Historic. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hope you hit that like button over there. Hope you enjoyed the deck. Uh, you know, Feel free to leave the comments. If you have a good plan to beat Control with Mono White Aggro, feel free to throw it there in the, in the comments. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.